So after I watched Forrest Gump, um, I thought of Apollo 13, and I haven't got around to watching the movie, but I decided just to look up um, the history of kind of like some NASA things and whatnot. And uh, this mem- everyone rem- remembers, I guess, or has heard about the Challenger uh, space shuttle that exploded or whatever, and uh, when, and all these people died or whatever. And I just when I clicked on it here, I found it pretty interesting here. Um, It actually says, uh, the mission ended catastrophic failure with the destruction of Challenger starting at 73 seconds after liftoff and the death of all seven crew members. So there were seven crew members and it exploded after 73 seconds. Uh, The date was also January 28th, 1986. And... uh, that was two days after the Super Bowl with the Patri- the Patriots and the Bears, um, the Patriots' first ever Super Bowl, and that was two days after that, and that game had 73,000 in attendance. So anyway, of the the seven uh, crew members, um, I went through them all here. Only one of them, uh, one of them was 37 years old, and it was Krista McAuliffe or whatever, I don't know can't see that far my eyes are bad but uh um it says this flight marked the first time a non-government civilian school teacher would be in a space shuttle so i clicked on her like i said she was 37 years old and she was also from boston now and the patriots used to be the boston patriots and they're still like right out there i think it says they're 22 miles from boston but uh uh, just found that interesting, and it was two days after their first Super Bowl. So the reason that she was on there was because Ronald Reagan announced a new program called the Teacher in Space Project, um, and it was trying to get more people, supposedly, into science and whatnot. But anyway, um, she there was she won it out of eleven thousand applicants. But let's see here. Okay, so they they mailed out 40,000 applications to interested teachers, and only 11,000 teachers uh, sent completed applications back. So this lady was one out of 11,000 people who responded, but there was actually 40,000 applications sent out. So, I mean, 11,000 and 40,000 is 444,000. And they also had 114 semi-finalists. So of the 11,000, they broke it down to 114. And then they did finalists after that, like down to 10 finalists. But like 11,000 to 114. Come on. 40, 11 and 4, 44. Why, didn't, why wasn't it just not 100 and then 10? That, that's so strange. And then it says in 2006, a documentary film about her and Morgan called Krista McAuliffe, Reach for the Stars, aired on CNN in the CNN Presents format. And whatever, let's see here. The film was narrated by Susan Sarandon. Now, I talked about Susan Sarandon in uh, the Bull Durham movie, but uh, she was actually born on October 4th. 1946 and uh they also um part of their mission was to observe and uh take photographs of Halley's comet uh when they were up in when they went up to space or whatever and the only reason i find that interesting is because i was on a big mark twain kick there for a while and still am i'm still definitely looking more into it but uh i just find it funny because he had talked about how he would die um, after the next Halley's Comet, and he really did. And then these people died just before Halley's Comet, but their mission was supposed to go up there and uh, film it from actually from space. And then Mark Twain and the number 44 being Satan, and then the 114 semifinalists and the 444,000 that I just talked about, it just made it kind of interesting. Um, that crash um, also ended, or explosion or whatever, it says that it led to a two and a half year grounding of the shuttle fleet. And then, so 
No other flights were until 1988 with STS-26 flown by Discovery. So, I mean, 88, and then you're 26, and then Challenger went on nine missions before, and it blew up on the 10th mission, and it was in space for 62 days. I mean, so, 62. 26, 1988 is when they resumed flights again. It also ended the uh, Teacher in Space project, and until they brought it back um, a lot later here, uh, in 2007. And so, this lady, okay, the one lady, the first lady died in the crash or whatever, but her backup was Barbara Morgan, and she actually went to space on the shuttle Endeavor on August 8th, 2007. Or 8 8 2007. And if you still don't believe it, look what the uh, it was actually called. So she then trained as a mission specialist and flew on STS 118 or 11 8 88. So the spacecraft was Endeavour STS 118 88, and they went to space on August 8, 2007. And she was 55 years old when that when she went into space. And it says the Rogers Commission determined that the cause of the destruction of the Challenger aircraft was due to an O-ring seal on the starboard rocket boosters, or solid rocket boosters. So it, the reason it crashed was because of faulty O-rings. And you come here and... You find out an O-ring, also known as a packing or toric joint, is a mechanical gasket in the shape of a torus. So let's click on torus here. And uh, so that's what it looks like. Another thing I noticed down here, there's a thing called a double torus. And obviously you know what it looks like already, but I just want to point it out. This is the double torus and the triple torus but you got the infinity or the eight so the plane or the shuttle crashed because of the o-rings that are the shape of a torus or um and then the torus constellation it says over here it's best visible at 9 p.m during the month of january and when did the shuttle crash the shuttle crashed on January 28th, 1986. So, I don't know, I just found that pretty interesting that the O-ring was the reason. The O-ring is a Taurus, and Taurus, the constellation, is best visible in January, the same month that that exploded because of that. Also, O-rings were patented by uh, Niles Christensen. And the, it was actually filed in 1937. And then later on, the uh, the government actually bought out the patent or whatever. And that was just for the United States. Uh, it says the U.S. patent, I guess. The first patent was from a Swedish guy. But uh, the one in the U.S. was from a Danish guy. Tribe of Dan, whatever. But uh, uh, I had one last thing I guess I wanted to say about... This all, um, Ronald Reagan was the president who had this whole teacher in space idea um, for this mission or whatever. And Ronald Reagan was born on the 37th day of the year in 1911, 9-11, and he died on June 5th, 2004. 2004 was a leap year. June That would make June 5th, the 157th day of the year, the 73rd prime number. And before Ronald Reagan was president, he was a famous um, actor. So he was. It says he actually he worked. He was the announcer for the Chicago Cubs. Um, so I don't know. I found that weird just because of Back to the Future once again. And uh, the space shuttle that actually was planned in 85, 
Um, the whole teacher thing was 85, but the flight actually took place in the beginning of 86, just like the Super Bowl. But uh, anyway, so he was traveling with them, and he took a screen test in 1937, and it led to a seven-year contract with Warner Brothers. And then his first few years at Hollywood, uh, he was in the B-film unit. Uh, so, And also, the first uh, screen credit was the starring role in 1937 movie, Love is on the Air. I mean, so 1937 was when his first movie was. I mean, I didn't really go that in depth, but I mean, you can just read up here. There's all kinds of just weird stuff that's in here. Reagan reportedly performed 77 rescues as a lifeguard. <laughs> like, really? 77? And then it says, after completing 14 home study Army extension courses, Reagan enlisted in the, in the Army Enlisted Reserve on April 29th, 1937. So he enlisted in the Army Reserve in 1937 as well. And as a private assigned to Troop B. So he was in B films in 37. He was assigned to Troop B and the 3- 322nd Cavalry of Des Moines, Iowa. 322. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I actually did find a bunch of interesting stuff about um, the presidents again. So hopefully I can get that posted eventually here. But uh, And maybe go a little more in depth with some of these. Um, I just haven't had the time to look through it all that well so anyway have a great night